All right. Um, we're going to talk today about another aspect of inheritance. Different kind of class. And before we do that, I want to remind you of some of the examples we've had before. We've had pizza. And stuffed crust pizza. We've had orders and we've had delivery orders. Finally, last time we've had sales wrap and we've had Junior sales rep and senior sales rep. Now, in all these examples, any particular object could be any of these things. In other words, if we order a pizza, we could be ordering and get a pizza. We could also be ordering and get a stuffed crust pizza. If we have an order, it could be an order or it could be a delivery order. Finally, if we're a sales rep, we could be a sales rep, or we could be a junior sales rep, or we could be a senior sales rep. In other words, we might have objects Chat here. Is the meeting being recorded? Yes, it is. Recording is in progress. Thank you so much for asking, though, because I have forgotten that on a number of occasions. So I do. Genuinely appreciate you asking me that and please do that every every session. But recording is in progress. Okay. All right, um, so I might need to make an instance of any of these. So I could say pizza P equals new pizza. I could say stuff crust pizza. SCP equals new stuffed crust pizza. Order O equals order. Delivery order O equals new delivery order, or so on. I could create an instance of any of these things. These are regular classes, in other words, just like we've studied before. The only difference is that some of them inherit from each other. But there's another kind of class that we're going to talk about today. And that would be if we've had something like this. Say I was a pet store and I was creating a system for different animals that our pet sell, store could sell. And we could define a pet as being the super class for dog, cat, and bird. All right. However, if you think about it, no one just has a pet. People have dogs, cats, or birds, or whatever other kinds of pets there are. 
you know, we could, we could put a list of all the things that people could have as pets, spiders and snakes and who knows what else. But you can't, but you would never say, I don't have a spider, a, a cat, a dog. Uh, all I have is a pet. Pet what? It's just a pet. It doesn't make sense, right? You have a pet and it is a dog. You have a pet and it is a cat. You have a pet and it's a tarantula. You have a pet and it's a ferret. Whatever, right? There's always a more specific thing. This is really too general so that we would never make an object of this type that's correspond to someone's pet. It's a little different from what we had before, right? Because before we had order and delivery order. Some orders really are just plain old orders, and some orders are deliverable, delivery orders. Here, everyone that we're going to create is going to be on this level. We're never going to create something on this level. All right? Because I know it has to be one of these. It can't be only one of these. Now, I can still inherit that. I can still make that class and inherit because there's certain things that all pets have. You know, all pets probably have a name. All pets have a date of birth. All pets have, uh, you know, uh, a, a, a size, you know, a weight, and so on down the line. Yet no one merely has a pet. So how do we keep someone from making, from doing something like this? How do we keep someone from doing this? We don't want people to be able to do that because a person's pet is going to be one of the subclasses of pet. It's not just going to be a pet by itself. We want to be able to do something like this for sure. Where, yeah, this person has a pet and it's a dog. But we don't want to say something like this. We have a pet and it is a pet. All right. So how do we keep someone from doing that in a class? That is what is known as an abstract class. So I have an example here. It's a pretty simple example, but we'll probably expand on it during the lecture. Let's bring these up and I only have a uh, pet and dog, but you could imagine that we maybe we'll create some other, well, we will create some other members of this class. So let me open pet. And let my let me open dog. All right, so I have a pet as a super class. And in addition to saying a class, I say it's an, it's an abstract class. That means I cannot in make an instance of this class. Then I have abstract methods, all right? Now, we'll talk about those abstract methods in a minute here. Well, let's talk about them now. An abstract method is a method that all of the subclasses of this class have to have defined. So pets get food and make sounds. That's the two things that I said that a pet does. We could put any number of different functions in here. But for our purposes, we're going to say that a pet makes sounds and gets food. Now, everything that extends pet, 
everything that's not abstract itself that extends PET has to implement those functions. Get food. Makes a sound. So let's run this, let's look at the results, and then let's start playing around with these classes. I have created a new pet, which is a dog. Comment this out for now. I've created a, a, a pet, which is a dog. I call the constructor that passes it string, a number, a string, and another number. So I'm going to call the constructor on dog. I actually have four constructors. This is a constructor that's going to be use, used. Actually, I think I have three constructors. But anyhow, the name's going to be set. The weight's going to be set. And we're going to set the hair type that the dog has. And we're going to set a frequency that you need to cut the dog's toenails. So we're going to say how many weeks. And in this case, I defined that for this dog, we need to cut their toenails every four weeks. Now, call this, and let's look to see how the, the constructors are changed. If we call the constructor with four arguments, the first thing we're doing is we're calling the superclasses constructor for name and weight. And the superclass in this case is pet, so we call the pet's constructor and give it a name and a weight. So we set those two attributes, the name and the weight. And then we set the hair attribute for the dogs and we set the nails attribute for the dog. Now remember, when we extend that class pet, we can add extra attributes. So in our case, we added an attribute for hair type and the number of weeks that we need to cut its uh, uh, nails, how, however many number of weeks we need to cut nails. So if we call the four argument constructor, we call the two argument constructor on the pet and then set the hair and Set the nails. What if we call the two argument constructor? If we call the two argument constructor, we call the same constructor on this class, not on the super class. Remember, you can call a constructor either on your own class or on your parent class, your super class. So if I were to call a dog constructor and only give it a name and a way, we're going to call this object's constructor that accepts three arguments, name, weight, type of hair. And we're going to default the type of hair to short. This function will get called and we'll call the four argument constructor that takes the name, weight, kind of hair and defaults the number of weeks for the nails to be cut to six. Then finally, we end up calling this constructor. So this is what's called constructor chaining. Let me show you an example of this. I'm gonna put in here This would be a good exercise for you to do.
I'm going to put here an output of what constructor I'm calling and on what class I'm calling it. So let me save these and let me compile it and we'll see what constructors get called. So if I compile these, and I run this, first thing that always is going to get called is the constructor on the path. So the two argument constructor gets called first. And then the four argument constructor on the dog gets called. So when I run this constructor, and I give it four arguments, calls the four argument constructor on dog, but the first thing that runs is calling the, the two argument constructor on the pet, and then the four argument constructor on a dog finishes. What if I call the three argument constructor? When the two argument constructor gets called, it calls the four argument constructor. sort of misleading the four argument constructor got called from the three argument the three argument constructor called the four argument constructor was called the two argument constructor these are kind of in reverse order of the one they get called four argument constructor calls the two argument constructor on pat okay now I say S make sound, S food, and S get food, and S class. So I call the function on dog that says make sound. I call the function on dog that says get food. And I call the function that identifies the class of this as a dog. Now, if food is defined in the pet class as an abstract function, what does that mean? That means anything that inherits from pet has to have that function in here. So if I get rid of this function, the make sound, if I get rid of this in the dog and I try to compile it, getting an error. And this tells me exactly what it what the error is. That the dog is not abstract. 
and does not overstride abstract method make sound in path. So dog would either have to be abstract itself or have a version of the make sound method. Why? Because we define that in the abstract class as an abstract method. So if we put that back in, then we can compile it. We're good to go. Now, the code that I commented out here, we're running, I can't call any of those methods on the pet class because catch frisbee is a method on the dog class. Remember, we can only call methods that exist in this class that's on the left side. So we can only call methods that are defined on the pet. Catch Frisbee is not declared for a pet. So therefore, when we compile it, we get an error. It tells us, can't find symbol, can't find s dot catch Frisbee. We can, however, if we cast it as a dog, we can then call on the resulting variable that is defined for a dog, we can call catch frisbee, get toenail weeks, and get hair type. And it displays all the methods for that. I love catching frisbees, six weeks, curly hair. Let's say if we wanted to make a new class that inherited from pets. Or make a new text file. And we're just gonna call it bug. And let's say for bug, we have an additional attribute, number of legs. And let's say we have a, well, what would happen if this is all we had? to create this that just has a get and set for number of legs. Let's think in our mind of what we expect this to do when we go to compile this. And I know I don't have any test code for it yet. I just want to see if this is going to compile or not.
Perhaps the name should start with an F or weather. All right, I'm not going to call on anyone, but think in your mind, is this going to compile if I try to compile this class? You have a 50-50 chance, so think if it's going to compile or not. It did. Oh, <laughs> why did I do that? Got to say extends. Yeah. Oh, I was surprised when I compiled. It gets an error. Why does it get an error? Well, let's follow this through. Are there any constructors on BARN? No, there's not. What does that mean? It means the compiler is going to supply a no argument constructor for it. It's going to generate one. Okay, that's all well and good. Where do we get the error then? We get the error because that generated constructor needs to call a constructor in path. And since it's a generated constructor, it's going to call the no argument constructor in path. Well, if we look here, there is no no argument constructor in path. All right. Therefore, I'm not going to, going to find it. So therefore, in the generated constructor for bug, it's calling the no argument constructor for Pat, and there is and there isn't any. This is telling us that even if it's hard to read. It's telling us the problem is with the constructor in the Pat class. The constructor in a Pat class requires a string and an integer. And we are supplying no arguments. And therefore, that's a problem. So what could we do? Well, we could make constructor. Pass our two arguments to the two argument constructor in path. And that's going to be okay. So no longer complains. All right. Now we could add constructors to this, we could add a third argument. A uh, three argument constructor that's first called the super. Uh, classes constructor, and then set the number of legs equal to eight, let's say. To the argument, what am I thinking? And we could have this one called this constructor in this class and default to A. That's what I meant. And that would work. 
Now, notice that this is defined as an abstract class. Therefore, there is no problem that makes sound and get food are not implemented. If this is no longer abstract, then we're going to get an error on that. But as long as it's abstract, it's okay. Let's say if we want to make a class for spider. What problems are going to one are we going to run into when we get this? Our constructor situation is okay because we call the superclasses constructor that sets the R, R, uh, name and weight and defaults the number of legs to eight, which is fair for a spider. So it's going to call the three argument constructor here. And the three argument constructor here is going to call the two argument constructor up in path. So everything should be okay as a constructor, or, or uh, from the constructor's perspective. Oh. Let's save it. Again, spider is not abstract and it does not override get food. So it gives me an error on that. Spider is not abstract. Now it's okay for bug to not have the get food method because get food uh, bug is itself abstract. However, when you finally get around to having a concrete class, it has to have a get food and make sound method. I don't know what spiders eat. I'll say flies. And I don't know what 
fighters go, I'll say they go G. How we can compile this. Right. So let me try to summarize this because I could see this being a little confusing. An abstract class is where you have a situation where you're not ever going to have an object of that type. All right. Yet it's convenient you can create in an abstract class, you can create abstract functions. You can create regular functions as well. I didn't do it in this case, but I could have created regular functions. Well, I said, they even said here, we'd want our get and set methods in here. But I can also define abstract functions. A concrete class can inherit from an abstract class, but then it needs to implement all of the abstract functions that are defined in the abstract class. Or itself be an abstract class. So you can have abstract inherit from abstract inherit from abstract, but sort of the bottom one, the last one has to be a concrete class and has to implement those functions. Uh, I hope that's useful. I hope that wasn't too confusing. Um, this week coming up, or, or rather, I'm sorry, next week coming up is our break. So there will be no class next week. Uh, it will be spring break. Uh, that doesn't mean that I'm not available. Uh, if you need help, just, you know, business as usual as far as that goes. Email me and I'll try to schedule a time to work with you. Um, does anyone have any questions over, over this stuff or anything in uh, dealing with inheritance, constructor chaining, or the like? Questions? Okay, that's all I had for today. We will see you in lab or we will see you two weeks from today.